Adobe XD has a powerful set of drawing tools for creating the iconography you need for your design system. Now, in order to create a pattern library, you'll need to gather content you create and existing content that was part of the audit you did when you started this process, most likely. Now, to create new icons, like this map pin icon, let's look at some of the tools used. I'll move over to the icons artboard here. If you want, you can work on a grid. You can assign either square grids or layout grids over here in the property inspector. We'll set a square grid, which will actually apply to all artboards. So the first thing you need to do is you need to select one of the artboards. So click on the artboard name here. Come back over to the property inspector. Choose square grid from the menu here. And make sure it's turned on. And you can set the size if you want to. This is a pixel dimension, like eight pixel by eight pixel grid and the color if you want to do that. Now, if you decide on a look for your grids, you can actually set that appearance as the grid default. You can then apply that default to other artboards you select as well. Okay, with a grid set, you can now snap any artwork you create to the eight point grid lines, or you can turn it off temporarily if you don't need it. Now let's create the icon. Zoom in more closely to the artboard so you can see the grid. Using the ellipse tool, you can create your initial circle. Go ahead and apply one of the colors you saved in the assets panel to fill it with color. To make a smaller circle that will actually punch through the larger circle, you'll just duplicate this one. So press Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows to make a copy right on top of the original. Then press Escape a few times and you'll switch over to the select tool so you can start editing. Now to resize this circle to make it smaller, Select it and press Option Shift on Mac OS or Alt Shift on Windows and drag from the corner. To punch the smaller shape out of the larger, you can use the Boolean operations you see up here. Now these are similar to the ones you find in Illustrator called Pathfinders, except for one thing you'll see. Drag across to select both circles and click Subtract to see the result. Now this operation is actually non-destructive. That means you can edit the individual shapes and objects. You can also click subtract again to turn it off and release the shapes again. Since it's non-destructive, if you double click in the red area here, you can select each shape independently. To complete the icon, we need to take this anchor point and make it a corner. So to be able to access the anchor points that make up the shape, double click on the red shape. You can now come to the bottom anchor point down here and double click on it to convert it to a corner point. You can then drag it down here using the alignment guides that show or the square grid if you have it set up. Now, if you drag and you don't see an alignment guide, you're probably zoomed out too far. If you zoom in a little bit further, you can see that the anchor snaps and you have an alignment guide. As you create icons for use, you're gonna to wanna to save and reuse them in the assets panel as components. In the next section, you'll dive into components. Now, if you don't want to start from scratch using essential icons, there are a lot of icon libraries out there for you to pull from. One example is the Streamline Icon Pack you see here. If you download the free version, you get pings. If you buy it like I did, you can get an XD file to open directly in XD, which I've done here. To use any of these icons, you can then copy and paste it into your document. But between creating your own iconography and bringing it from other sources or creating it in other apps like Illustrator, you can create whatever you need.